Hey there, Commanders. Today I want to cover a feature that a lot of people are okay with, but that I feel could use some fine-tuning in order to bring ship health and damage mechanics down somewhat, without completely ruining the overall experience. This may be controversial, but keep in mind that I am just some schmuck, and what I say here is more for speculative, notional fun than anything else. Or, put another way, if I were designing a space game, this is how I would want to do it. Since we are discussing the Elite Dangerous ship armor system, it might help to understand how these mechanics work in-game. To summarize briefly, ship armor only applies after incoming damage gets past the shields, where it then goes through a series of deductions based on hull hardness, resistance, penetration, etc. Hull hardness is determined by the ship hull and cannot be changed by any factor in-game. All other values can be manipulated by weapon choice, engineering, resistances, and total hull integrity. There are a lot of ways to mix and match parts for a sturdy hull, with some adjustments based on fighting Thargoids or for conventional warfare. One of the problems engineering introduced relates to resistances. It used to be essential for ships to have a mixture of thermal and kinetic or explosive damage. Each damage was tuned to be the most effective against a specific defense. Thermal for shields, kinetic and explosive for hull, with plasma being the adaptable middle ground. Engineering attacks this approach by allowing for hull configurations that bear no overall vulnerability to any of the damage types being able to proc 40 to 50% damage resistance across explosive, kinetic, and thermal damage types renders weapon selection basically meaningless. The multi-cannon, pulse laser, and other standard weapons used to be top performers in PvP. After engineering, these weapons suffered such dramatic damage reductions as to be very difficult to match the current plasma accelerator and railgun meta. These weapons perform so well in the current engineering environment because the plasma accelerator deals partially absolute damage, ignoring the aforementioned resistances, while the railgun cancels shield cell banks and can precisely target ship internal modules. Both these devices are able to ignore or bypass aspects of shielding and armor in ways that make them top damage dealers and by such a significant margin that it's very difficult to get other weapon types to compete effectively. In an engagement with two equivalently skilled and equipped pilots, the PA railgun configuration will usually win. This isn't the only reason why ship armor has needed attention. Another common issue is the extraordinary difficulty that piracy mechanics have in their ability to disable a target ship. It takes a disproportionate amount of skill and finesse to only destroy the engines on a trade ship, especially one flown by a player. It's far too easy to accidentally destroy merchant ships in the process of trying to steal their cargo. Hatchbreakers can help, but limpets suck. Being hampered by issues with the game's physics and the amount of time required to collect all the cargo that gets scattered about. As the game has evolved, and new optional internals have been added, there has been an explosion in the integrity of small and medium ships. This has made them much harder to kill than they have previously been, drawing out engagements in a way that can disadvantage larger ships. Addressing the armor system can help bring hull integrity and damage resistances back into line, without ripping the whole engineering system out by the root for a rebuild. The best way that this can be accomplished is by breaking out hull and module reinforcements from the optional internals menu and placing them under their own menu in ship outfitting. The armor outfitting menu could then be divided into the primary hull armor at the top and a number of armor layers beneath it. These layers are where hull and module reinforcement packages are placed, functioning exactly as they do in the optional internals menu. The primary armor defaults to lightweight alloy and is upgraded or engineered in much the same way as it is now. Armor layers are determined by the ship, 
hull and armor type used. Larger or more combat focused ships have more armor layers by default, with armor upgrades opening up additional slots for new layers. Engineering can alter the performance of the armor and layers, but cannot add or remove layers. For example, a Cobra Mark III with lightweight alloy might have a single armor layer available. This could be used for a hull or module reinforcement, which could be engineered or have standardized base stats. Upgrading to a reinforced alloy could add an additional layer, enabling another module or hull reinforcement to be attached. These layers could support different sized packages depending on the ship, with some layers being thicker than others. On a Cobra 3 with reactive composites, the thickest layer could be limited to size 3, with a size 2 and a size 1 beneath it. Breaking armor out of the optional internals menu like this means that each ship's maximum hull integrity can be targeted and more appropriately tuned. Different hulls can have different starting armor layers, with upgrades adding more than one additional layer. For example, the Alliance Chieftain could have two armor layers available with lightweight alloy and gain two more if upgraded to reactive composites for a total of five armor layers. While the Type 10 starts with five default layers and gains four more with an upgrade to reactive composites, making a total of nine layers. All this is to illustrate the principle at play. The exact figures for integrity, layer count, damage resistance, and engineering effects are all subject to some level of change within this system. The idea is to make the hull armor more of a factor in ship selection, allowing for it to be a perk that some ships can offer which others do not. This is in contrast to the current system, where armor and hull integrity are purely a function of how many optional internal slots a given ship has. This means that military-only compartments would be converted into equivalently sized armor layers in the armor menu. Some ships could lose a few of their optional internal slots as part of this process, but whether they do or not, the end result is an effective means of solving the whole integrity creep that has been working its way into every ship. Passenger, trade, and multi-role ships may, as a general rule, offer less armor layers than combat-focused ships like the Vulture, Viper, Chieftain, or Fertilance. While combat-focused ships offer more armor layers with fewer optional internals, each ship can now have its peak hull integrity and resistances tuned independently of its optional internals, further specializing and focusing the modules available in each respective menu. This system would go a long way to reducing the inflation of ship integrity and help emphasize the different roles that ships are intended for. Rather than all ships being adaptable to all situations, specialization would help each ship regain the sense of identity that was lost with the arrival of engineering. As with my other ideal system videos, this is a speculative exercise that I do for fun. I do not expect these changes will be implemented, but I do enjoy creating them as an exercise in product management and game design. If you have any other ideas, feel free to discuss them below. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.